Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission of Mac Tech Keyboards. And yes, uh, my voice is definitely affected right now by the COVID. It's, it's making its tour throughout my body and it's now hit my throat and lungs. So I will do my best <clears throat> to be as clear as possible. I apologize. Today, I wanted to share with you guys a project that um, I've kind of been on this quest for a minute to build a switch break-in machine since I saw them and I did a while back feel an old cherry switch that was very old I don't remember exactly how old but it definitely had been worn by time and it was like it reminded me of glass on glass it was a very smooth feeling um, people say buttery, but no, it's not slippery. It's like ice on ice, glass on glass, like two really fine surfaces. Anyway, I came across this one that uh, it used a cog and these leg or these arms that you would clip onto them. But no matter how much I printed it, um, it was either slip on, slip off or it broke off. Um, and the, the main motor that, was, that had a, basically a rotor going through it. If it wasn't perfect, at least straight, it just stopped after a little while. So I came across this actually only about three weeks ago or so, three or four weeks ago, and was interested. And then I, then I looked at how it worked and I was like, well, this has a lot less chance of breaking in my opinion. So right now I currently have two running. I'm running them. Um, I'm using the 1 to 48 gear ratio motor uh, that I purchased off of Amazon. Um, that's these motors right here. Uh, oh, sorry. Try not to make a mess, but you got a bunch of little parts. And this is the motor that I'm running. Um, one rule of thumb, I'm not running it for more than six hours at a time. And... It, it is roughly doing 40,000 actuations um, per hour. So I do intend in the future, um, there's a reason that there's channels in here. I have one set of plates I haven't loaded yet, but one set of plates I did load up with my next set. It has these cables in here so that you can actually insert, um, say a hot swap socket that actually counts the actuations. And I would actually like to probably just use an MCU have a small display that's a counter as well as a heat sensor to cut off power should uh, should this heat up because uh, they will burn out. But if you make sure to run it less than six hours so far, I've had just fine luck with the rest. So anyway, we got a few pieces here. These are the plates. They do come apart and they snap together. So it allows us on either side, as you can see, it's a three, three by three square. So nine on either side gives us 18 for a total of 36 switches that we can break in on one machine at one time. Um, I don't have the time or the patience right now, but if I did, I would love to either, I don't know if I'd use two motors or get a stronger motor and actually do it four way so that you could actually double the amount. But this way, it's actually, it's, it's a really nice design. Um, now these are the off centers as you can see, they have a line on there so that you can get more of an off-center break in if that's what, what you're looking for, which a lot of people recommend. But you can also flip it backwards and it just acts as a regular plate on the side. Now, so this is basically how it works for all intents and purposes. This, this piece here and then I left actually I left the support on this one um, I printed it I don't know why when you put it on the printer it goes this way and I don't want to print the whole bottom you know as a support so I printed it this way giving it a tree support for the top and I just wanted to go ahead and pull it off and just show you guys all right usually take this off it, a lot of times you can get every piece off but sometimes it will leave 
a little bit of stragglers around and usually a, a tool will do pretty good at pulling them up obviously you want to try to get this as clean as possible but sometimes these pieces just they've basically bonded but because it's beyond it's below this bar it's not going to affect any of the motion that we need in order for the switch actuation to work so just kind of wanted to include that to see there's a little bit left on this one as well now i am doing a couple of things different on this one so i also intend to just make a couple of changes on this one just for well i like experimenting um, i'm going to add just the tiniest amount of padding as you can see i don't if it has like a half a millimeter width i mean it's just a little bit i'm just seeing if i i know it, i can't make it quiet but if i could just reduce the sound of it a little bit um it might not drive my wife mad now another thing that uh the design never mentions but i did decide to do is add a little bit of lubrication it's not going to hurt so let's go ahead and put this together now to get the simplicities of it let me go ahead and just put the motor to kind of give you an idea of what's going on now we can pick the side that is the top and really i mean they're both kind of the same but because the wires come out on this side i consider this the top so whatever the side the top is i grab what's called the yoke squeeze it on and down into the motor so now we have control over the motor by hand. Now we have, I think that's the right one, is it this one? All right, now we have the little part at the bottom. Now this one is gonna be a little bit trickier, and this one is probably gonna require a little bit of sanding. Um, and I did print this at, uh, 0.10 of, of a millimeter so it should have been as good as possible but again I have an Ender 3 it's not the best printer out there so there are many times that I do have to um, increase you know uh, make some space because the tolerances aren't quite there now, this one's not built as good as I'd like it to be this one seems a little bit better built let me work on this one always keep in mind that we just want to get it on there we don't want it to be loose on there because if it's loose it kind of defeats the purpose so we want to make sure that we can fit this piece onto there all right so that is looking good all right All right, so we've got these pieces and we may as well finish putting the motor together. And these bearing joints are basically the magic of this entire machine. And I'll show you why in a second. So these take the, these take these two eights. Yep. Yeah, it's the eights. So basically you slip these on I've got the right tip on here. I do. All right. All right. So these bits are really the magic of how this machine works. And I'll show you here shortly. So let's go ahead and take one piece. Now, in the video, they did do it without it being on the, um, already on the motor, but we've already got it in there. So now we'll just go with that. A lot of these magic sticks, wow sticks, whatever they're called, the electric screwdrivers, really aren't going to have the torque needed to um, get it through a, you know, a hole that has not been already bored out for a screw. I mean, it's the right size and everything. Now, we want to make sure that although we want it on there well, we do not want it so tight that the bearing is not moving bearing needs to be loose all right Looks like we gotta... all 
If you notice me taking my glasses on and off, I need to get a new prescription. I just haven't had a chance. Um, I'm sure that the whole world has been wondering why. All right. I don't know why I jumped onto that. Fog brain is real on COVID, let me tell you. One second to the next, I'm like, what? What's going on? What am I doing? Huh? All right. Let's go ahead and put you on the screwdriver. the wow stick or whatever these are called hold on to back the yoke tight get as much as we can get at least some purchase going got spent that's that's it that's really the majority of the work that needs to be done I mean for the motor now what we do need to do is add the arms the way the arms are added is you put them in place Yeah, this one moves nice and smooth. This one should be moving just as smoothly. If we put this one on this side. Yeah, it's the plate. It's definitely the plate in the situation and not the case. Oh, look at that. Well, see, sometimes you flip them around, you find that they actually work better on one side than the other. Now, before we put the plates down, I like to go ahead and just, this is my 80-20 mix that I use for doing uh, most of my switches. And I'm just going to do a little layer. On just basically the distance that I think it's going to be traveling. So, about three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch deep. All right. So that's just gonna help. I gotta make sure I got these on the right side. Yep, that's moving pretty good. You can also make sure that, you know, everything is good in this part. You want this part to be as smooth as a baby's bottom because this is the part that's going to be getting most of the um, motion most of the back and forth is going to be happening on this little section of the arm As we can see, we've got them on there and they're both sliding pretty good. So at this point, what we need to do is attach, um, this is basically the bracket to keep the arms on. So, and for these, we're gonna be using, I believe these are the, I'm sorry, for the, uh, when we put the motor together, these are M3 eights that go into there. Um, to put these on, we're going to need M38s as well. Uh, same, yep, that's the, nope. Yeah, it's not the M38s. So for these, because it's just a little piece, 
Uh, obviously, there's two ways to put this on there. One way is the wrong way, one way is the right way. So usually you basically just want to match it up, as you can see. Let's see how I'm matching the holes. So that way there's enough room for it to go back and forth. All right, so let's just get back to building it the way they originally intended. I still do have another change coming up, and I'll show you guys. All right, let's put these back. So best way I've found is to go ahead and just get the screws driven, started into the, um, again, we want to make sure we're the right way, yep. All right, start driving the screw in until it stops. Now let's go. Oh. All right, we got those in place. And as you can see, they slide back and forth. Now I like to grease these as well, but I do like to do it once I've put it in. Uh, first time I did it, I did it beforehand. <laughs> I got really greasy um, and we're not looking to put too much we're just basically looking to get these arms that are going to be going back and forth inside to have plenty of lubrication both on the top and the bottom so usually you can just push it in and give it a good squirt and pull it out and catch any it might have missed so bottom's a little trickier because you can't really see what you're doing you just kind of run it along the top and hoping that some of it will slide down to the bottom um, I mean a hole at the bottom would make this easier but like I said these aren't in the original plans these are just changes that I've made going along the way Now, obviously, this will also break in over time because, you know, the back and forth motion, the same thing, the same reason we're doing this to the switches is going to happen to the switch breaking machine. So I'm not giving much of a lifetime for these. So these are the plates that they give you. These are three by threes where you can just stick you know, switches right on in. And here we have, we're doing today, some milky blacks that I've had for a bit. Um, these are stock, they haven't been lubed, they haven't been anything, they, they sound like a, a stock switch. Um, they're not bad, they're not amazing, but you know, for a budget. Now, we'll go ahead and just load these up. I like to load them up in orientation. I don't think it really matters, but that's just my OCD, I guess. So once we have the plates loaded, um, these switches have, yeah, this plate did not print out as good as the other ones, um, but it should still hold. They have both an uh, outsert and an insert so that you can just basically line them up. Well, I guess the joke's on me there. I cleaned up my floor so that I could find things when I dropped them and <laughs> it didn't seem to make much of a difference here. So, oh well. <laughs> First couple of times might take a little bit harder 
to snap in. I find using some needle nose pliers works pretty good. This hole's just pretty loose there for that one. Um, but that's fine, as long as we can keep a cap on it. All right, so here's one of the things that I made changes with. These are the caps. That's not a good example of one. Uh, these are the caps the projects come with. The project comes with. They're these flat caps um, that come in a 10 strip. I mean, you can buy, print them one by one. They come in a 10 strip and they just really have no, I guess again, I'm printing on an under three. So, and I need to, I really need to east, uh, calibrate the E-steps. I just haven't had a chance. But I mean, while they do work and they do go on, sometimes you get this where they'll just get stuck down inside of the switch. Or, let me see, I had to print so many of these because I've been able to use them once and then it just breaks and it's done. So, there. If I can find one of these that actually works. See, this one works because it's missing the entire side. So, and then put it back in. What I did was I found some caps, low profile caps from a different project, which um, I'm going to see if I can make a pull request and get these in. Because not only do these fit nicely onto the keycap, I mean, they really, they're not going anywhere. They're actually as you can see actually a tad bit lower than these flat caps so there's more room on there which has allowed me to do because they said right now we can't do basically long pull stem switches and i've been able to do long pull stem switches with those keycaps so i'm going to go ahead and stick with those keycaps for right now i think i have enough to cover these up if i don't i've got some more printing um and then i can just use some of these as spares um, to cover up the spots so yeah let's go ahead and start loading these up and getting them ready for the show let's put the motor in huh how about we do that so the motor trying to do stuff and film it at the same time it's not always as easy as one might think so let me go ahead and get this screw started in here well, that was easy it is now started now let's get it in to that hole It is in there enough. So we've got the eight millimeter three, uh, the M three eight millimeter holding these down, and then we need the twenty five millimeter ones because they're going to go all the way straight through the engine to holes on the other side. So I said, don't um, you know, make sure not to screw this one in too tight because we want to make sure we're getting these down into the hole all right so now we can go ahead and tighten up this puppy i'm going to try to keep it as straight as possible screws seem to be in there quite well this is not loose all right so now what we want to do get these wires out of the way I'm gonna put a plate on either side only one for right now you guys need to test um, tolerances to see if you guys can do it now if you flip it the other way 
if you flip the plates the other way it's going to do off-center actuations um, they recommend doing it off-center one way off-center the other way for you know half and half the time right now I'm doing just straight so I will get more into it the further that I go because it does say to print four plates but it doesn't properly move there's four plates in there now one of the things that's very important for this yoke for you to use is to test to make sure that it's working without impedance because if something is blocking it or making it harder for it to turn in this situation this is the first one I've built um, using only these so it looks like I actually have enough on either side to actually yeah so we put the plates on either side we make sure that we can turn properly All right, now that we have the motor built and ready to go, it's time to assemble it and test it. Um, now we have these off-center plates, so if you want to break in the switches off-center, you would put them this way and then this way. You would let them run half the time and then you'd flip either flip the switches over or flip the plates over so you're getting you know, some even, uneven actuation. Right now, I am just gonna be doing uh, regular actuation I just want them to be uh, I'm not too concerned about the off center so I'm turning inwards the the bars that do the off center and I'm putting them on either side of where the plates are going to be and I put this the motor square in the middle to make sure that I have as much space as possible and then I slide these down into their chamber. Oh, this plate got. All right. All right. So now two tests that we're not going to have any impedance we can so if the motor turns by hand without issue we should be okay at turning it without so this is the final part this is a US BC female tail basically um, it's nice that the tips have already been um, tinned so I can easily solder them on, but before I solder them on, I'm just going to do a quick test. Just so. And they have been tinned, which is nice to have pre-tinned um, wires. But before I make permanent attachments and put on some heat shrink wrap, I am just going to go ahead and give these a test before I do anything permanent to make sure everything's working. The motor works, power works, everything is going to go smoothly. So I don't have to come back and unsolder something if it doesn't work. Uh, all right. All right. And just for the time being, just to make sure there's no short. Yes, I know this is not electrical tape, but this is not permanent. I'm just going to put some tape around the ends.
All right. For this, I do recommend that you use, um, um, I don't know the name, the names of them, but a USB-C that has higher than five, five volt. They can go, I think, nine, 12, 15, I believe, but they're self-negotiating because um, this requires six to run properly, if I'm not mistaken. But let's plug it in and see what happens. And there we go. There's the switch machine in action. So as you can see, it's pushing the plates and making sure that each of the um, each of the switches are getting um, actuated. Now, what the project says, the actuations are roughly forty thousand per hour. I don't think they're quite that high in this configuration. Um, they're not running, I, but I've seen them running run a little bit faster with lighter spring switches. And I know these are a little heavier, so obviously all of them together, I would assume come into play. So yes, the, the, the weight of the springs and everything, um, that's why I want to add, if I have the time, uh, make one of the uh, sockets in here, or maybe one on either side, um, basically a hot swap socket or at least when it goes in that it catches both both of the uh, legs of one of the switches and then can read every single time it actuates so that we can have a counter um, we could you know set a time and also have a heat sensor to make sure that if the engine or the motor gets too hot it's going to stop so that was me putting together the project i am going to put all the links to the project like i said i didn't design this i found this online excuse me and i'm glad that i did i feel that it's a great project um it can have some improvements but it works that cog system just did not work for me and i wasted way too much time i could have built five machines in the time i wasted on trying to get one of those working and i printed out so many pieces but this is it's straightforward it's um it's simple and it just works and the thing is the difference is night and day i ran some gatoron yellows some plain gatoron yellows that hadn't even been lubed uh through them for roughly 240 250,000 actuations and boy it's like glass on glass now i mean there's some spring ping which i can fix with a little bit of oil but there's no need for lubrication on, on the rail stems. They are a light class. It really does make a difference. Now, there are going to be some switches that there really isn't going to be much difference to be made. Take an Aco Silver, for example. It's already that kind of smooth. So whether they polish them or whatever, uh, there are types of switches that just are not going to be... Um, they're not going to benefit from this process, but I believe that there are a lot of switches, especially the NK Cream, that will benefit from this process. Is this for everybody? No. But I mean, if you've got a 3D printer and you got a little bit of spare time, the pieces don't cost much. I think I paid 12 bucks for a bag of eight of these motors, um, about five bucks for a pack of five of these uh, tails, and um, 3D printing this stuff didn't take long at all like i said i've got two machines going right now this is my third and i'll probably be building a fourth um so anyway uh this is uh and just so that i'm i'm giving proper credit where credit is due I, although it's going to be placed below in my um in the description of the video this project is by a developer named keekeen k-e-e-k-e-e-n and it's called the MX Switch Break In Machine. And it's on GitHub. Like I said, the link will be down below. If you guys have any questions, comments, ideas, um, like I said, I'm going to probably be building more. And I plan to make uh, some more changes and additions and hopefully even um, participate in the project because I think it's a great idea. But anyway, um, I don't know if you're going to try it, but if you do, I would love if you uh, came and, 
had shared it with me either on the on my YouTube channel or on our budget keeps on Reddit because I would love to see um, you know other people doing it. I did it all in black. I know it was kind of boring, but that's what I had available right now. Um, and this filament was not as dried out as it should be, so that's why the part of the reason why the prints came out. Another part of the reason why they came out kind of a little bit wonky is because I do need to e-step calibrate my printer. But being sick <laughs> takes a bit of a toll. Um, these videos actually do kind of help animate me a little bit for at least a little while. So I hope that this video helped inform you guys and showed you how simple it can be to make your own um, switch machine, switch break-in machine at home. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed it. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.